Dr. Chol Kim here from sunny San Diego, California. We are getting started. This is a young 52 year old with a recurrent disc herniation. Look at that. And unfortunately, this did not get better with non-operative treatment, which happens often. So we're gonna go back in and do a very careful discectomy using the endoscopic technique and finish it off with band-aids. So there's gonna be some extra scar tissue in there. But I'm gonna take my time and be extra careful and meticulous. Step one, go through the checklist and make sure there's not one thing missing. And if there is, I wanna know about it now, not halfway through the case. Number two, the room is totally set up exactly the way I need it so I don't have to look over my shoulder or be awkward because I want to be comfortable. And then three, we want to position the patient relative to the planet Earth. So I do a few things. Number one, I draw very long lines so I can use my vestibular system. And that is the clinical midline. And now I'm going to bring in the C-arm and get a perfect AP at the level that I'm going to operate on it relative to the planet Earth by airplaning the bed, not the C-arm. I'm looking at the pedicles and the end plates, all of them. Finding the least worst shot, this should get worse. You see, it's actually getting better, shot. And now I see a double overlap on pedicle of four, shot and save. So I'm going back toward me again. So I've passed it. Now I gotta fine tune the shot and save. And yes, be this OCD. Lock that down, that's the perfect lateral. And don't take your OCD medicines the morning of your first case. So now I want to get the perfect trajectory to enter. And if I'm going to enter a transforaminal approach, then I don't draw all these lines. I just estimate where I'm going to go in because this is the least confusing to me. Shot and save. And I want to slightly cephalad to caught at trajectory. That looks perfect for a transforaminal approach because I want to do a chromatodiscogram. If you want to do that with the spinal needle, putting a little bend on it on the opposite side of the ramp or the bevel allows you to drive it. Again, I've estimated the entry point, but with this needle, I'll be able to tell exactly where I want this. And I can tell I want to start slightly higher if I wanted to go in, but I don't need to get too crazy on this. If I wanted to do a transformal approach, I make the incision just proximal to that local anesthetic. I've injected five cc's of local to anesthetize the facet joint because I love Marcan. I think it's good for you. And there's the gate theory. So now I am touching the lateral wall of the facet joint. I'm going to back up and walk anteriorly. Shot. Just like how Helen Keller would read a novel with her fingertips. I'm going to do a chromatodiscogram now and I'm feeling the end point Both of this. Right, Shot and save. I'm totally happy there. If I was worried, I'd get an AP. I feel the disc. I don't feel him jumping and neuromonitoring is quiet. And it feels like the disc. I'm going to enter it. I'm going to use the bevel to aim north. Shot. You see how that needle all of a sudden is so helpful. I got to still back it up and advance it. When you back it up, stop and take a shot. Don't back it up, advance it and take a shot. It'll just go in the same spot. Shot. See that? I told you. Shot. Okay, so it buttonholed through the facet joint capsule. Shot. So I have to back it way up past the facet joint. And now I am very carefully advancing to the right spot. Shot. Oh, I am liking that long old time. Shot. So I've got the 18 gauge needle parked on top of the disc. I'm putting in the skinny 22 gauge needle. I'm feeling it like Helen Keller, making sure there's not any nerve activity, making sure that it feels like the disc. Shot, entering the nucleus, and now a chromatodiscogram. Contrast with methylene blue, because it is really helpful, shot and save, I'm looking for a leak out the back, to identify and localize the annular tear, disc herniation, and knowing when to be done. Look at that, I know exactly what to do now. I'm gonna do a interlaminar approach. That means I'm gonna be just off the midline, not a transformer approach. Even though I use the transformer approach to perform the chromatodiscogram, this is interlaminar. So same thing. I'm going to use some estimates. Then an 18-gauge needle to anesthetize the track and confirm that there's the perfect entry point. Okay, for a uniportal approach, shot. That's a little high. For a biportal approach, it would be perfect. So I'm going to make the incision slightly below that. 
Okay, small stab incision at the perfect bullseye entry point. And now for a very important step, my favorite, the T-handle. And I want to go right for the mid-spinous process and then surf my way down to the lamina. Base of spinous process and wall of spinous process and then toward me to the medial edge of the facet joint. And most importantly, confirm that you're at the right level using lateral floral. Okay, so far so good. Lots of scar tissue is expected. I'm taking off this little sliver of bone at the edge because that will allow me to get inside the canal safely. And I'm expecting to find a really big disc protrusion. So step one, release everything so it's mobile. Step two, expose the disc herniation by sweeping the dural tube away from the disc herniation, just like an open, except this time we're gonna use this cannula to sweep it away. That requires a little bit of delication finger maneuvering. Okay, I'm going deep laterally, making sure that the dural tube is medial to me. It's hard to tell right now. I want to be so careful and delicate. I don't even like stripping the blood vessels off the dural tube if I can help it. There's the disc herniation right there. That's probably why I went in before. There's a big bump right here. Now, if it's not evident why I use the blue dye now, I don't know what to tell you guys, because look at that. I'm sure you don't absolutely need it, but I've regular pituitary. I've learned how to do it this way for so long that once you taste honey, you can't go back to sugar. That's what. It's also how I know that I got everything. Hopefully most of the blue will be gone by the time I get done. Look at all that disc. I basically pushed it back inside with the cannula. And there's the mother of the pieces that is causing most of the problem. It's not the loose pieces, it's the piece that's attached that comes back into the wrong spot over and over again. The loose pieces tend to get out of the way after a while. Okay, another tip. The Trigger Flex probe has a curved deployable tip. So when you want to work in the periphery of your surgical corridor, you can't lean, you have to rotate and deploy and push in. And if you wanna sweep, you have to pinch the handle at the tip with the tips of your middle finger and thumb so that you can pinch and rotate all at the same time. And that is a really important feature of this Trigger Flex Pro. If you have a big handle with the loop on it, you can't do that. And I see surgeons bending the needle to try to get someplace like this instead of rotating and deploying because we're not used to working in a fixed angle surgical corridor. What I do is I use all the tools that I have in my possession, including the cannula, which has a leading edge. And I have swept away the drill tube away from me. Now I'm sweeping, rotating, nudging, and pushing down gently. I call this the San Diego pimple popping maneuver. Have I mentioned lately how much I love this laser? Oh my goodness gracious. If I didn't have this laser, this would have taken me forever. There's actually a lot of disc left. It's just, look at this cavity. I didn't do anything. It just came flying out of here. Just got to get the loose pieces out. Push in. Okay, I'm at the midline. Can you raise your machine up a little bit? Yeah. I'm past the midline. Now I'm underneath the disc. I'm going all the way across with this curved instrument. And if it goes all the way to the other side, that means I'm hugging the posterior or the yeah, the posterior wall. It went all the way to the other side. The only way you can do that is to be dorsal. And that's how I know I'm hugging the undersurface of the cacapupo annulus all the way to the left side, even though I'm standing on the right side. Okay, I got all the loose pieces from that cavity all the way to the other side. Now I just want to make sure the dural tube is totally free and clear. There it is. It has got a rind of epidural scar tissue, which as long as it's not adherent, you should leave it because we just need it to be able to pulsate and slide. We want the inflammatory process of healing to turn off. Look at that little sneaky thing. Look at that. Look at that. Little sneaks. Can I have the regular tutor? We call this the Mikey fragment. That's when I think I'm all done, I take one last look and look around and something we find something almost every time and we gave it a name, the Mikey fragment. Because in the olden days, this, the head nurse would come in at the end of the case to ask, so how's it going? And I'll say, 
I'm almost done. And then all of a sudden, we'll find this. It's like, are you almost done? It's like, yes, I just got to find the Mikey fragment and then we'll be done. There's the edge of the dural tube. It's pushed all the way to the midline, you got to keep in mind. Yep, it was stuck all along here. Look at all this Goomba. I know. Who came up with this articulating down going curette? So smart. I don't know how I did surgery without this. Oh, I'm feeling so good now. There's the dural tube. A, it's intact. B, it still has a little rind of tissue with blood vessels. And C, it's totally free and mobile. And D, it doesn't have anything pressing on it. This went very well. I went through the same incision. I feel so proud of myself. And I got a lot of good stuff. This is just what we retrieved. Probably two thirds of it is in the drain. And the world's most expensive Band-Aid. And I feel really good about your surgery. We're all expecting a great result. I'm praying for a speedy recovery. So best wishes.